Liberals are having public and private conversations about the Prime Minister's leadership after that shocking by-election that saw a Liberal stronghold in the heart of Toronto flip to the Conservatives. Cabinet Ministers are standing firmly behind the Prime Minister. I'm so proud to serve alongside Justin Trudeau. He is still the most important leader of a generation to make transformational change in this country. None of the, 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 the members of parliaments or ministers that I've spoken to have told me that they, they think that the Prime Minister should go. But several Liberal MPs speaking on the condition CBC would not name them shared different views with CBC News. One saying, I think the Prime Minister, just to safeguard his own legacy, has to step down. And on the party's direction, everything we've done in the past year has been tone deaf. Another said, major changes are needed, but I'm not sure what they are yet. And on the question of Trudeau's leadership, does he have to go? I think it's difficult to see other options. But a third MP told CBC it is the Prime Minister's decision to make. The caucus isn't planning a revolt against Trudeau. It's time to bring in the power panel who are hopefully not planning a revolt against me. <laughs> Amanda Alvaro is a former Liberal Party communication strategist. Here with me in the studio, Tim Powers is a former strategist for Conservative Parties, and Jordan Leichnitz is a former NDP strategist. Uh, it's good to see you all. Uh, Amanda, the last time I saw you was during the by-election special we did on Monday night, where we had to tap out after four hours because of the count. Um, how do you feel after being there with Leslie Church and seeing it go the other way on the advance vote and where the party is right now? How would you assess the state of the Liberals after that loss? Oh, such a big question, David. I mean, being in the room is always particularly hard because you're surrounded by so many val volunteers who have put so much hard work and energy into a campaign like that. And you also have a candidate who's waiting in the wings, somebody who I personally know who's a formidable candidate, truly an, an excellent uh, human being. And I still believe that that riding is, is really winnable for her in the general election. But, you know, it's obviously disappointing and it was such a nail biter and we knew how close it would be. And, and those margins were razor thin in the end. But there was an expectation given the climate, obviously, given where the Conservatives are in the polls, that this was was not only not going to be easy, but it was going to be really difficult to win. And obviously, uh, it didn't go that way. And I think coming out of it, there's, a, as you know, there's been a lot of chatter, both about yep. a leadership and where does the Liberal Party go from here? And where does, you know, the Prime Minister go from here? And all of those questions really put a focus, a sort of divisive focus on the party where you're not able to talk about anything else. And the Prime Minister is not able to talk about anything else. And certainly, they want to be talking about future direction. And yet here we are. Hmm. Yeah, Tim, I, I mean, from talking to a bunch of MPs in the last couple of days, um, it, it, there's, they, they, they seem to want a national caucus meeting. I don't know if they're going to get a national caucus meeting soon because they're not supposed to meet till they meet mm -hmm. in uh, early September, late August. Um, but to demand this point, it's going to be tough to move ahead and talk about other things until you clear the air on this and, 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 and have that kind of a conversation. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the Prime Minister wants to do that. He may have a whole bunch of different reasons for for that, though uh, it would be good caucus management to, to try and do that, bring people together after a tough loss would seem wise, but you know, ultimately it's up to him. I think one of the things the Prime Minister doesn't get credit for, and it's hard uh, to afford credit to the poor man for anything at the moment, but I will give him this. He has future-proofed his party in such a way that he at least to date has prevented and probably will still be able to hold off internal revolt and division. When, when he took over the party, he got rid of all of that with the, the Cretchen Martin Wars. In a strange way, he's created this space that is allowing him to have fidelity from his key cabinet ministers, at least publicly, and control of the organization. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you're going to see an internal revolt as you may no, have seen in Gretchen so Martin yeah. ever or you yeah. would have seen in the conservative side. I think this is still Justin Trudeau's call. But you do have to wonder, the man is not stupid. He has to look across the country and see, you know, it's not just this by-election. It's in just about any election where anybody's been wearing a red liberal jersey over the last year, provincially, federally. There's been a massive repudiation of that L, and because mm. the guy who leads that team is Justin Trudeau. Fair or unfair, that is what it is at. And unless Justin Trudeau wants to oversee, if he were to have an election today, it'd be a significant defeat. The, the one thing I'd add, I'm sorry I'm droning on about this, I've heard the theory mounted that, oh, well, you know, he's also thinking that he's the only one who can lead the party against Pierre Polyev and make sure it's not a huge loss. 
Everything right now is a referendum about him. I don't think that's going to change. Mm. So I think he's, if he is thinking that, he might have to reflect further on whether that's good, good advice or not. Jordan, where are you on this? Yeah, I would agree with actually a lot of what. Okay, Tim stop the show. Now. <laughs> yeah, it's good. We can roll now. Uh, no, I mean, th there's no question. This is such an incredibly difficult environment for Trudeau. I think that even if they are able to stave off a lot of public division, it's really tough to overstate what type of energy that containing that and containing those internal discussions also can cost a government, right? So making sure that uh, caucus is on board, I think is, is always a bit of a smart thing to do. So I am surprised to see that they're not maybe having some space to convene caucus. There has been some outreach, just so yeah. you know, calls going out from but PMO to caucus members. Right? Yes, that's And this is also a bit his own style with caucus. And there are pros and cons to that. And I think Right now, you know, there would probably be a case to be made internally that folks might need to hear from him about what the plan is, what's going to be different. And I think the challenge that they have is that they, they now need to look at all of the stuff that they haven't touched so far. So that includes signature policies like the carbon tax. Mm -hmm. That includes signature people, mm -hmm. perhaps like the finance minister, perhaps like the prime minister. But I actually think maybe an unpopular view, I'm not sure that he's going to go based on this. I think he had baked mm -hmm. in already the idea that they could lose in St. Paul's mm -hmm. and that uh, mm -hmm. every all the signs that we're seeing so far that they're going to kind of continue down the path that they've been on so far. Uh, I want to get to Amanda in a second, but I want to just pick on what you said about uh, Christian Freeland there because liberals were talking to me today about the, the couple of uh, comments she made during this campaign. The, the defense of capital gains talking about basically it's gated communities and pregnant yeah. teenagers or capital gains increase and then the comments on election day where she talked about the choice between what they want to do and the cold cruel you know smaller world that she was speaking about the conservatives, but may have been seen by people as speaking about voters. Yeah. And someone today compared that to Hillary Clinton and the basket of deplorables. And I don't know if that's a fair comparison or not, but these were comments that stood out and not necessarily in a good way yeah. for the liberals. Uh, how do you see that playing? Uh, in yeah, and I mean, listen, I think Minister Freeland, is, is, she's incredibly smart. She's very capable, but communications is not her strong mm -hmm. suit. And I think that those comments are really reflective of that. You know, when she tries to connect with people, that's often when you see these sort of, these flubs, you know, the Disney Plus one is another mm -hmm. example. So I think it's, it's just not her gift, right? And unfortunately, the role that she's in right now is Deputy Prime Minister and as Finance Minister, she's often getting called upon to do that communication and it's just not working. And so that's why I think it's another reason why all this internal focus for the Liberals, even if there isn't a lot of public division yet, um, really what they need to be focused on is improving their communications with Canadians. Right. And that right now, mm -hmm. that's uh, it's not possible. So Amanda, we had Fred Delory on the show uh, earlier, and he, he has been harping on this, that there's no narrative from this government, right? None. Yeah. Like no narrative. It, it, it's a uh, Another person described to me as looking for wedges rather than looking for wins, and, and, and that's mm -hmm. what they need to focus on is finding a winning path. Where, where, how do they move now in, in the wake of all of this? Yeah, and I, I don't uh, entirely disagree with that, but I think, listen, there's supposedly 15 months until the next election. <laughs> 15 months is like 500 years in politics. A million things can change between now and then. Just look at where we were 15 months ago. Literally, the entire world can change. So that's a huge, huge runway. Um, and if they're able to communicate, I think one of the things that we saw coming out of this by-election, and when you look at the polls, the, the dissatisfaction that Canadians are talking about are issues that matter to them. So having a really clear narrative, not just about what they've done, because we, they have to do that, they have to talk about, but they also have to talk about, Polyev has put this, a big emphasis on the country is broken and it's broken because of Trudeau. He's had to talk about what he's against, but not what he's for. Yeah. So the Liberals, I think, need to do two things. They need to talk about what they have brought to fruition, things like, you know, childcare, farm, Pharma care, um, dental care, things we've talked about on this program, but they also have to talk about what's at stake. Ask the tax doesn't go away without things being taken away. So right. they have to turn the channel a bit to have Polyev respond to what he's been talking about, a broken Canada. What does a fix it look like for you? And it has to be more than a bunch of fancy slogans. It can't just be ask the tax. He has to be forced to say what he stands for. Okay, uh, quick, Tim, enjoy that, because I want to play a clicker. Yeah, no, no, I'll be as quick as I can, David. Uh, Amanda's not wrong on that, but the problem is back again to the prime minister. The messenger, you can have the best story in the world, but if your two main messengers right now are so disliked 
by the Canadian public, they can say, I'm going to give you a bar of gold tomorrow and I'm going to give you another <laughs> one the next day. It's <laughs> not going to matter. So they've got to find a way, yes, to get a story, but who's going to tell it? Who's going to tell it and have it accepted? Yeah, right. And right now their message is mired in the backward looking. Look at all the great stuff we did yeah. for you. And, and combined with what Tim's talking about in, term, in terms of a messenger that people have tuned out, it's just falling on deaf ears. Yeah, you got to defend your record prosecute their record right. and then offer but a vision for also, the future. Yeah, right? you got to, what's at stake is important. Right, okay, this is an interesting thing. There's a clip I want to play courtesy of my uh, colleague Colin DeMello of Global News, who spoke with Ontario Liberal leader Bonnie Crombie just before Monday's vote about Doug Ford's PCs running ads, framing her as a friend of Justin Trudeau. Listen to what the Ontario Liberal leader had to say. Our policies are different. My ideological standing is a little different. I'm much more of a centrist. Having been a mayor, I was very fiscally responsible, and I've never run a deficit, yet I'm very socially progressive, right, as you well know. The trying to make you out as being a uh, friend of Justin Trudeau. Um, well, that, I think the bigger friend is, is, is Doug Ford, is the closer friend of Justin Trudeau. You see them um, in photographs and in meetings together uh, quite often. I probably speak to the Prime Minister less than once a year. <laughs> so, Amanda, that's uh, Ontario is kind of important to the Liberals, and uh, the Ontario Liberal leader saying that. Uh, what, what's your reaction? I mean, she did not do any favors to <laughs> okay. the current Prime Minister. That was a stunning distancing, um, I, and, and unfortunate, really. But I, I understand her position. Listen, the polls are the polls. It's no secret uh, the unfavorable view that's been held right now, and she, you know, she has her her own stake to worry about. So understanding that, but I think, you know, what is important is how she's able to preserve the liberal brand and still try to extract herself from the federal liberal brand at a time when all eyes are on it. It's a it's a really challenging position for her to be in. A lot of political gymnastics yeah, there. Right? Well, no, no, well, we're getting close to the Olympics and there's now a, a, a relay team of lead, liberal leaders that could uh, enter because they're all running so fast and furiously away from uh, from mm -hmm. Justin Trudeau. Bonnie Crombie's just the latest. Mm. Uh, I mean, you, Susan Holt in New Brunswick, our own premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, distancing himself from, from the prime minister. Just about any liberal leader is out there and I mean the irony of that is is just is huge because of course in 2015 they couldn't do enough to hug the man and be part right. parcel yeah. and he lifted many people to uh, to electoral victories but that's the cruel nature of politics the prime minister understands mm -hmm. that uh, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon uh, unless again there is some kind of uh, disruptive action of great significance that puts the prime minister uh, in a better position or finds him uh, doing something else and there's right. a new leader. Uh, we got 45 seconds left, Jordan, they're all yours. Well, I think it's uh, the big question now is does that disruption come from the prime minister himself? Is mm. this the catalyst for a decision on his part uh, to move on to other things and open the field. And I, and I really don't envy the Liberals because I think this is a difficult call. You, have, you could trade somebody who, uh, who has carried you through many elections, is a very good campaigner, but is incredibly mm -hmm. unpopular, verging on toxic right now, or you can throw yourself into the uncertainty of a leadership race with maybe untested front-runner candidates like Mark Carney. These are not really, uh, you know, for, for an, a long-in-the-tooth incumbent government, these are not appealing options. So I can see why there's not complete consensus on which way to go. Okay, uh, we've got to leave it there, uh, but this will not be the last word on this topic. I can promise you that. Amanda Alvaro, Tim Powers, and Jordan Likens, thanks so much, gang. And